Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we're gonna be putting together this, the Creelty 3SI 3D printer. Big thanks to Creelty for sending me this printer for review, unboxing, and a whole lot more. Let's get started by rolling the intro. Creelty has taken some steps to make sure that your package arrives very safely. I hope they did this not just for me because they knew where they were sending it, but rather everyone gets a nice wooden box so the components are protected. Inside, there is still plenty of foam to protect those said components. And the good thing about this package is that they don't actually come in too many pieces and we'll get to that in a second. Inside the plastics, we get some warranty information, a little spade to take your prints off the heat pad and of course we've got the tools to put it all together with screws and some adjustment tools to make sure that everything goes well. The black foam with the pin is to clean your extruder. We've got some pliers to cut, very sharp and very good for cutting the plastic. We've got an SD card adapter with an SD card because that's how we're going to communicate with the actual printer. We've got some spare plastic to melt, not a good roll. We've got an Australian plug with the three pins at the, well both ends actually, one male female. And here we have the first thing that makes this version of the Creality 3D printer special, it is a way to stop you from running out of your plastic roll. That little module there will stop the printer from printing. And here we have the direct gear extruder. This has two gears running the filament into the actual heating element. It has a little fan there on the side, which really helps with making sure that you can sort of go over the edge without the plastic melting off. I'll explain that in a little bit later. We've also got Creelty's auto leveling tool. Uh, this will help you level the bed without messing around with the screws. It's so good. I have used one in the past, but this is directly integrated into the whole module and you don't have to print anything more to try and fit an extra auto bed leveler tool. Next up is the screen. It is color and it is controlled by that single knob. And to be honest, it doesn't need anything more than that. It mounts on the side as you will see in a moment. The next thing that makes this 3D printer unique is the Z-axis engines are dual screw, which makes it very, very stable and very very precise. This is such a good addition. And one of the complaints I had about past Creelty devices, now with these two, it makes it a lot more stable and you don't need to adjust all the bits and pieces as much. And it comes in one piece. There's no need to build this one single piece. It's all in one. There's no need to rebuild it. That's why the actual build process is easy. It's in six apparent steps, which we will go through in a moment. Adding to those six easy steps, the base is in one single piece. Both the power unit is built into it. It has a little drawer and everything is already connected up. By the way, the motherboard is a 32 bit quiet motherboard, which means you will not be hearing a lot of those noises that kind of sound like a dial-up modem. It has a very thick cable at the back, which means things shouldn't get tangled and shouldn't get damaged by anything. But do make sure that you have space behind the device if you are putting it up against an actual wall. Further to that, the cable is fully braided, which also adds to the quality of this product, especially when it's all ready to go and you don't need to mess around with anything. It has plenty of rubber feet on the bottom and it has a little bit of a dust filter there, um, but you will see later on that it does get filled up with dust and you might need to give it some uh, compressed air to clean it out. So let's get started in putting it all together. If you just put the base down, uh, it should make sense. Get the cables out of the feet to make sure that nothing gets stuck underneath it. So you're working with a very flat base. As you can see, there really isn't that many parts. There's a few screws which you will find in the plastic packet and they're fairly self-explanatory. The two big bits that look like a giant U-shape go on top to make sure the little motors are facing the back of the unit towards the power. And all you have to do is just flip it on its side and put a couple of screws to initiate the connection and then you'll be able to actually connect it up. They are the long screws and there should only be five of them, but you only need to use four. There is a spare one for you, so don't get stressed if you see it. This probably isn't the best way to do it, but with the camera and the location I was working with, this was the best I could do. Uh, you will probably need two hands or at least prop it up 
with something, don't put it upside down because the chance of it slipping, if you have it facing you know, upside down, you're holding it and trying to balance everything is very, very high. Once finished, you should have the shape of a 3D printer. And now we're just adding a lot of the other bits and pieces that are left. And there's really not many. We're gonna be plugging in a few things. So um, hopefully pay attention, but the instructions are really, really good. The next thing is the extruder itself. And it goes in the most obvious place and that's in the middle. And the way it mounts, it just sort of sits on it when you hook it on the right. It has a little bit of a, a like a tip that pulls out. So you don't have to hold it in while screwing. You put it on, get the little screws and they hold from the right hand side if you're facing forward and all you have to do is screw them in. Next, let's mount the filament holder and remember it will be facing backwards away from the actual printer. So that little head on the right hand side will be going there to the back of it and the little unit for knowing if the filament has ended will be facing towards the front. You can just clip that in and it sits pretty well. Don't be afraid that it'll unclip, but there's a little plug to plug in while we're there. And of course, when you do loop your filament through, make sure that it's looped through that to, you know, it's a bit of a safety feature to reduce the chance of your filament running out during a print. Next, let's put the mount for the actual cable. Because the whole unit will be going up and down with that, this is where the cable can sit nicely and uh, not get in the way or do anything else. There's a little plastic thing on the side that tells you where to do it. You can also plug in the other motor here. And of course, they all should fit in. They all look very similar, but they are different sized and they should fit in really well. Uh, you have little numbers on them to tell you where to go and the little plastic tab tells you how to slip this into the little mount there, the clip. You can then loop that through below the top bar onto the extruder. Now we can take care of that little cable just to the side of the first motor. It goes right underneath there. It actually notifies us when the extruder hits the left hand side and that will be the point at which it'll stop. Here's a base button there that it reaches, it clicks and it stops. We need to make sure this is plugged in. Otherwise the motor could burn out because it keeps going left thinking there's nothing there. It just sits like that. There's nothing else to clip onto there. The extruder cable goes right underneath that top bar as I said before, and it has a mount with some clips on it to make sure it doesn't fall out. It will only go one way and you also have clips to hold the actual cable in there. Uh, it, it is a tight fit, just squeeze it in there. Uh, the cables won't break. Um, you, can't see my hand there, but just push it straight in and the two bars on the side will clip in and you can push them in as you go in. It's kind of like mounting a RAM on a computer if you've ever done that before and you can push it in and they'll both go in at the same time. Uh, that will keep it nice and tight so it doesn't fall out to make sure that, you know, when you're printing for 40 hours, that thing is nice and solid and doesn't lose connection. Next up at the bottom, we have the other cables to plug in. You can take off this sticker and we plug that into the motor on the right hand side. They're located right next to each other. You won't be able to mess this up. On the other side, we have clearly marked uh, plugs. So make sure to Take that rubber off, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. There's really nothing there, but just plug it straight in and there'll be another plug to plug in there in a moment. Once you undo the little stickers, you can then grab the next plug and run that through and plug it in. The screen mount is probably the strangest thing because it's not like it needs to be screwed in. It literally sits on top of this plate here. So you screw the plate in, but the actual screen gets plugged in and then sits nicely on top with uh, these sort of screw hooks as if you're mounting onto a wall. I didn't find the need to like screw it in. Uh, I, I sort of thought, oh, well, if I need to move it or anything like that, I can always take it off but it's it's really easy to mount just put it in there and it's and that's it for the build this has been very very easy one of the easiest 3d printers i have ever built i've built about two anyway so <laughs> i don't know if it says a lot but this has been extremely simple and the whole product itself is very solid comparably to the other printers i've had before i've had to adjust things uh, tighten things up and some of the parts weren't quite well cut so the actual measurements were a bit off and some screws were a bit loose and so it wasn't that easy but this one the quality of the build is impressive compared to the other printers even from Creality, not just other competitors and i'm very impressed so far let's put the last bit the most exciting bit and that's the roll of plastic and when we do put it through make sure to loop it but cut it on an angle to make the tip really really sharp 
What happens is that when the actual gears latch onto it, it just makes it a lot easier to push through the end hot end um, through the whole unit there. And because it is a direct drive, it does have a lot more pressure in there. So we'll loop it through there and make sure it's tight because you don't want the whole thing unspooling, which can happen. Once you lift that little button there, you'll actually be, have the ability to push through a little screwy bit that will actually drag it all the way inside. So you just do it until it stops and then you can plug the power into your 3D printer. Once in, you can get started on printing. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like this video if you did. There is another video of a full overview with features and discussions about what this printer can and cannot do. So make sure to check that out. That should be live right now. Again, big thanks to Creelty for sending me this 3D printer for review.